Welcome back to Renovari and Distilleries, sixth episode. Hope you guys had a great uh, Christmas. Uh, thanks for uh, coming back and uh, joining us uh, tonight. We're going to uh, we're going to talk about glasses. What uh, kind of what the different glasses are used for with whiskey? We're, these are primarily uh, talking about whiskeys. There's a lot of uh, some different ideas um, and opinions. You know what they say about opinions, but. Uh, uh, this some kind of different philosophies about glasses and and how uh, how they affect the taste of your of your whiskey. So hey, I appreciate everybody joining. My name's uh, Keith McConnell. I'm the founder of Renovare Distillery. We're a craft uh, distillery that uh, we're not in production yet, but uh, hopefully very soon we'll be able to uh, to announce a uh, a location and and kind of let you guys know. But we're not in production yet, but uh, hopefully very soon. Again, I think uh, thank everybody for uh, joining us, and uh, hope everybody had a great Christmas. So, Zach, what's up, buddy? Thanks for joining us tonight. I hope you had a great Christmas. So, what we're going to talk about tonight is uh, whiskey glasses, um, and kind of what the differences are, um, and really kind of how um, how to pour a good whiskey, and talk about ice, no ice, all that good stuff. So the first glass we're going to look at is your typical tumbler, um, and really, um, you know, that works good for for pouring, you know, neat or even with ice. You know, the big one of the big, um, I guess, trends now is the, the the round ice, and part of the reason they have the round ice is because it, it melts uh, slower, so it doesn't dilute uh, your drink. But these are really good for mixed drinks like old fashions, um, that type of thing. Um, really, when you, you you can still when you pour your drink, if you're, if you're drinking it neat or even on ice, you know you still can get that smell, um, the aromas. And really, with a whiskey, a lot of what a lot of what your taste actually comes through your nose. Um, it's the aromas that are coming off of the spirits uh, that that really lend uh, the flavor. And actually, you know, it's kind of interesting. Professional uh, tasters, whiskey tasters, are actually called nosers. And they get, they smell they, as much as they use their taste buds. So, on the next glass, we have, you'll see these four are all sort of similar, the, the tulip design, where you have kind of the bulge and you have a tapered neck, um, just like the, you know, the classic uh, glass. And really what, if you're pouring your, your, your whiskey neat, what this really does is it, it collects the, all the aromas um, so when you when you nose it, you know you, it's right there, and you can you can really smell everything uh, that's coming in it. And then every time you drink, uh, your nose is right there, so you're getting a lot of those uh, those aromas. <laughs> hey Zach. So and then the, there's different variants really of these. Um, and they all do the same thing. They're really to kind of trap those aromas so you can smell. And then your old, your you know, your standby, your whiskey shot. Which really, with a with a really good whiskey, um, you know, these are okay. You're not going to be able to really smell as much with these. Um, they're really more for shooting, you know, something like a tequila or um, even a vodka, really, because you're not getting a lot of nose off your vodka. So and one of the, the cool things, too, uh, or one of the important things, I think, is um, on pouring a whiskey. So we'll, uh, let's see here. Oh, let's pull my favorite, Stag Junior. Now there's, you know, some people, some people like to pour, to have it on ice. Um, and it's really whatever your, whatever your preference is, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, I don't like ice. Um, for the reason that only on a brandy on brandy sniffers I actually have some of the brandies they even have like a little candle underneath it to kind of warm it up and what that does is that it gets that evaporation going and where you can really smell so if you put ice on it it tends to uh, to not to, to slow down the evaporation so you're not going to get as much smell you're not going to get all those aromas um, and you're really going it, to it's not you're going to lose some of the experience in my opinion um, so, I mean, one of the things I would encourage everybody to do is kind of get out of their comfort zone and try new things and just see. And maybe you, you like it with ice and, and having it warm is not your thing. That's fine. 
you know, everybody's got their own thing, but at least I would hope that everybody would at least try it. Get out there and try it and see what see what it's like. So this is one of my one of my favorites, a Stag Junior. Um, it's 129.7 proof. So it's pretty stout. So when I'm pouring this, you know, I'll pour a good amount. Now because it's such a high proof, when you smell this, you're gonna get it's gonna be kind of it can be overwhelming because it's such a high proof, but but what I suggest is like, even on a high proof, you know, on any of them really, pour it just like it is right out of the bottle. Really get your nose in there and smell. Now with this high proof, you're going to get a lot of alcohol, but you can get a lot of the other aromas. And then just take a little when you sip it. And just take a little sip. Kind of slosh it around a little bit with your tongue and let it coat your whole tongue and that's hot <laughs> but you're going to notice all oh, a lot of different flavors it's going to start out as one flavor it's going to evolve into another into another and into into your finish now because this i mean it's 139 proof and i recommend on any really i mean even like jack daniels and a lot of those you know they, they're they're bottled really at 80 proof even those, I suggest adding water. When you add water, it's going to open that whiskey up. You're going to get a lot more of the aromas. You're going to, you can, I mean, it, it really changes it. And on top of that, it's going to bring that proof down to where it's manageable, where you can actually taste it. You know, it, everybody likes to think that they can drink 100, 100 proof whiskey or 139 proof whiskey. And all you're getting is alcohol, really, on a lot of them. You're missing out on a lot of flavors. So if you'll add just a little bit of water, and this is another thing too about your water, it needs to be distilled water or at least filtered water because your water out of your tap, you know, it's got a lot of chlorine and, you know, depending on where you're at, I mean, it can have a lot of iron. It could have a lot of compounds that affect the flavor of the whiskey. So I suggest at least using filtered water, um, if not distilled water. So we can add just a little bit and I try to bring it, you know, think, if you think about it, I try to bring it up or down, I should say, to like a 60 proof, something like that, something that's more manageable. Uh, and you can tell, like when you roll the glass, you'll see the uh, the way the liquid streams down. You can, you can tell it changes the proof of it. Now, after we water it down a little bit, now we smell it again. Now, a lot of that alcohol is not quite as strong so some of the other flavors um, some of the other aromas are coming through and then we'll sip it again and that's much nicer it's starting to really open up this is going to need a little bit more water one thing I wanted to tell you too and I do this a lot because you don't want to you know you don't want to overwater it you don't want to water it down um, so sometimes what I do um, it's just really because this is what I've got laying around the house. You can take a dropper or even a little medicine syringe. If you got kids, you'll have medicine syringes. And fill it up with water. And just start adding a couple of drops to it until you get it down. Kind of where you like it. It's amazing how much. I mean, you'll know when you hit it. Uh, you get so much more flavor. So then if you see if you had something like this, if you had ice, if you had it on ice, you're not going to get that evaporation. Um, it's not going to fully develop. You're not going to be able to get all those uh, aromas and everything. But you know, like I said, you, you know, you should drink it the way you like to drink it, no doubt. But I really would encourage everybody to kind of branch out and try try drinking it a different way. Try different things. Um, mix up the cocktails. Mix up how you drink it neat, um, and kind of experiment and you know see what's out there and see what uh, you know see what you like. You know, I, it it does take a little while to if you're new, especially if you're new to whiskeys, to develop uh, your palate. So don't be afraid, especially if you're new to whiskeys and you know you're. It's going to taste better to you if you really kind of water it down even more. And that's fine. You'll eventually hit, you know, your kind of where you want to be and, and what tastes good to you. And that, I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. You know, we're, we're here to enjoy it and, um, 
you know, you water it the way you need to until it tastes good. So again, guys, my name is uh, Keith McConnell. Uh, I'm the founder of uh, Renovari Distillery. I appreciate uh, everybody joining us. If you guys, uh, hey, Paul, how's it going, man? Thanks for liking us. I appreciate it. If you like what we're doing, uh, please go to the Renovari Distillery Facebook page and, uh, and like the Facebook page. That way, uh, we go live every Thursday at 7.30. Um, so that way, if you like the page, you'll get notified. I've got some really cool things coming up uh, in the near future. Um, that hopefully, maybe next Thursday, I'll be able to announce um, some of them. I've got some really cool. Maybe having, uh, might possibly be having some cool special guests uh, kind of come on. And maybe even uh, from uh, being able to broadcast from, from, from some different locations. So hopefully um, next week um, we'll be able to maybe announce uh, kind of some of those. Hey David, how's it going, man? Appreciate the uh, thumbs up. Uh, glad you could uh, glad you could join us. Um, so every part of this, what we do uh, every week too, is we make a special cocktail at the end of this. Um, so I think we should probably do that. If you guys have any questions, uh, please. All right, so David Martin asks, uh, where can I buy your whiskey? Well, David, unfortunately, you can't buy it yet. Um, we are still in the process of kind of securing financing and you know finding a location and all that good stuff. So hopefully soon. Um, watch out. Watch on our Facebook page. Um, you know, we'll be keeping everybody up to date, but uh, hopefully soon we'll be uh, wrapping up the uh, securing all of our uh, financial stuff, um, uh, all the capital, uh, and then we'll... Uh, be picking a location and we'll we'll announce that so unfortunately um can't buy it yet sorry bud but uh hopefully soon so just keep watching out for us i appreciate it appreciate you joining appreciate you uh, uh following us all right so if anybody guys got any questions please uh you know don't hesitate to uh, comment and ask and if there's anything you want to talk about in the future then um, you know let me know i'd love to uh, or any different kind of cocktails you'd like to try or, or if there's anything you're curious about um you know, and even after this goes live, um, when it's on our Facebook page, uh, you can still comment, and I'll watch it. Um, so, yeah, so if there's anything you want to know uh, or would like for future talks or whatever, just comment, um, and I'll get back with you. All right, so for tonight's cocktail, since, uh, since we're coming up on New Year's Eve, I thought it'd be kind of neat to do something with uh, champagne. So I found, I came across a sort of a, a version of a Northern Lights sparkling cocktail. And this came from David uh, Delaney Jr. Um, out of Los Angeles. He's a bartender in Los Angeles. So I came across this on the internet. Uh, thought it looked kind of cool. So I thought we would, uh, it might be a good thing to, uh, to make here. Hey Josh, how's it going buddy? Glad you could join us. Hope you had a good Christmas. Um, we need to get together soon, by the way. Paul and everybody, I appreciate it. All right, so on to the cocktail. So what this is going to have, it, here's the ingredients for this. Oh, thanks for the thumbs up, man. I appreciate it. Um, it's going to have a half ounce simple syrup, a half ounce of fresh lemon juice, two bar spoons of cranberry sauce, um, which I made cranberry sauce this afternoon uh, just for this. And I was actually surprised how easy cranberry sauce was to make. Um, two dashes of bitters and two ounces of sparkling wine. So those are the ingredients. Josh, have you heard of this one? Hopefully I won't mess this one up like I did last week. God, man, if y'all were here last week, I was trying to make a Vesper, and uh, man, it got it was bad. <laughs> I really messed it up. So hopefully, this week I won't I won't mess it up. All right, so there's our ice. And yeah, I did use my hands, but I'm drinking it. So and I did wash my hands. So all right, all right, so. In this, we're going to have advice. So, uh, Paul, thanks for posting, Paul. Paul asked advice for new whiskey drinkers. 
Well, are you looking for um, recommendations for a whiskey or um, just kind of how to drink it? Um, if you're new to it, um, you know, the big thing is just go out there and find something um, and try different things. You know what? What I started doing for a long time was every week or every other week I would go buy a whiskey I've never had. That got a little out of hand, so I kind of backed off a little bit. But uh, we'll get together. Let me know. And uh, and you can come over and try some of mine. And uh, I'll show you some different cocktails and stuff, too. All right, so there's a half ounce of some syrup. <laughs> All right. Uh, lime juice. We're going to have a half ounce of lime juice, which I just poured. I said lime juice, I meant lemon juice. So I just squeeze this. There's a half ounce. And hey, check it out, I'm not making a mess. I usually make a mess making these things. Uh, two shots of bitters. Uh, Paul, how to drink it. Um, yeah, like I said, if you, if you start out, um, if you take some distilled water or at least filtered water and start watering it down and just sip it um, put a couple of drops of water sip it see how it tastes um, and kind of keep doing that until it gets to a level that you that you like um, the big thing is just going to be experimenting with it really all right so this says uh, two bar spoons of cranberry sauce I don't have a bar spoon but you know actually I cheated normally I don't make these ahead of time Usually, the first time I've ever made it, it's live, which eh, can sometimes be a disaster. But I did make this one earlier. Um, and I did two spoons, and it was way too much cranberry. So I'm going to put about that much cranberry. Also, you're supposed to double strain this, and I don't have a double strainer. I've got to get some, some bartending tools. All right, so bitter. Oh, and gin. I forgot the gin. This says, this says an ounce, but I'm going to go with an ounce and a half. And, and like I said before, if you've ever watched any of my other, other episodes, one thing I always talk about is like with these, you know, try the recipe the way that it's written the first time and then kind of experiment with it. Sometimes, you know, with a lot of these things, they call for simple syrup. I'm not a big sweet uh, cocktail drinker. I, I don't like it when it's real sweet. So a lot of times I won't put in the simple syrup. If I don't put them in the simple syrup, then usually I add that same amount of a, of a different liquid. Um, whether it's usually more, <laughs> it's usually more booze, because I like them a little bit stronger. So is my wife Leanne. She's in the living room watching this. Hey, Leanne. Hey. So, Jack, what's up, buddy? It's been a long time, man. Hey, I appreciate that, brother. We need to uh, get together next time you're uh, back in the country or back in this part of town. All right, cool. So to kind of recap, we got an ounce of gin, half ounce of simple syrup, half ounce of fresh uh, lemon juice, two bar spoons of cranberry sauce, two dashes of uh, bitters. And then we're going to shake this. And, and I'll try not to make it so loud into the mic. But if you've ever heard, you know, listen before... When we shake, when we're shaking up stuff, um, if the ingredients are alcohol with non-alcohol, like orange juice or like this is cranberry sauce, you want to shake it up pretty hard to get everything mixed up. If the ingredients are alcohol and alcohol, like a lot of martinis, really they should be stirred um, and not shaken. And uh, Josh, if you're still on, jump in. Uh, Josh is an amazing bartender. Dude rocks. Um, if you're ever down at Flying Squirrel, you should go see him. Really, really good. And uh, he can answer way more questions about bartending than I can. All right, so we'll shake that up. All right, so that's well shaken. Now, this, like I said, this is supposed to be double strained, and I don't have, I've got a fine strainer, but is with the last time I made it, with the cranberry, because it's homemade cranberry sauce, I think, 
Um, the fine strainer is too fine and it clogs up and it takes forever to pour. Um, so really I need another bar strainer, I think. Uh, anyway, uh, this will just have to do. It's still pretty good. So pour, uh, not a nice color. That's probably too much. Well, you know what? I'm gonna pour a little bit of that back out because that's too much. All right, that looks good. And then, um, I forgot the champagne. And Leanne, could you go in the refrigerator in the garage and bring me the little bottle of champagne, please? And y'all could see Leanne. I always forget something. You gotta love live. All right, so while we're waiting on the lovely Leanne to bring us our uh, the champagne, may I have the champagne, please? <laughs> All right, so, and I do, I would recommend with this. Ah, uh, Josh says it's true. Stir the spirits. Shaking for citrus. Cool. Thank you, Josh. I appreciate it. So, um, the champagne, I would suggest a good champagne. Um, this is all we had for the little ones. And I didn't want to open up a, a really nice bottle right before New Year's Eve. So, it is what it is. So, it calls for two ounces, but you can just top it off. And that may be flat. It might have been in the refrigerator for a while. And then we can garnish with a couple of... Uh, cranberries or not so this is the northern lights sparkling cocktail i thought it'd be a, you know kind of a cool little uh cocktail before uh, for new year's eve especially coming up now let's try it and see what hmm that's actually not bad um i'm not a, it, it's a little for me like i said it's a little too sweet I would probably take out some of that simple syrup, especially with the cranberry. So the cranberry sauce too. And I, I, um, when I made the cranberry sauce, it was 12 ounces of cranberries and I put a whole a cup of sugar and then a half a cup of water and a half a cup of orange juice. So the cranberry sauce itself was pretty sweet. So with this one, I would definitely probably take out some of, for me, I would take out some of the simple syrup. But please, on all these uh, uh, cocktails, go try them. Um, make them, see what you think. And then uh, come back and let us know kind of what you thought, uh, how they were, uh, if you liked them, if you didn't like them. Um, and then if there's anything in the future too, a special cocktail that you would like for us to uh, uh, to kind of highlight here, uh, just let us know and uh, and I'll do it. And like I said, hopefully next Thursday, hopefully next Thursday I might have uh, a pretty cool announcement um, with some uh, unique things we're going to do with this Facebook Live broadcast. So again, if you like what we're doing, we're going to do this every Thursday, 7.30. Please go on the Rental Variety Distillery Facebook page and like us. That way you'll be notified. Uh, tell all your friends. Share the video. Um, and then, uh, too, I'll let you know uh, as we get closer to you know, launching and to finding a location, I'll let you know. So, guys, hope everybody had a Merry Christmas. Um, I hope everybody has a safe and wonderful New Year's Eve. Please, 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 I want everybody to come back. After the first, drink responsibly. If you're going to drink New Year's Eve, let somebody else drive. Call Uber, call a cab, but don't drive. Not even a drop. Don't drink anything and drive. Please, we want you back. So everybody have a wonderful New Year's Eve. Um, and we will see you back here next Thursday at 730. Hope you guys have a good night. See ya.